Hello and welcome to Homebrew Adventures, the RPG show where we take wannabe adventurers and take them through a one-shot adventure created by you, the listener. I'm your dungeon master, Corey Keller. Join me every episode where I take our group of heroes who like to dungeons and sometimes dragons, and we will see if they survive. Do they have what it takes? Is your adventure challenging? Let's find out on Homebrew Adventures. <laughs> on homebrew adventures during the night while you're sleeping most of you were having kind of nightmarish dreams not necessarily like nightmares where you woke up in a sweat but just weird stuff going on do you know anyone by the name of uh jelena i just please please we don't want any trouble hey just come on looking for jelena hey we're tired of the way you're treating them can't you see they're scared yeah we protected your town don't you don't have to be a jerk about it don't listen to him so yeah, I just walk outside and like sit on the curb. People tell me they're gonna give me vests, then I don't get vests. We're all supposed to. Well, get uh, a vest. that's what I'm actually here for, guys. Uh, guess what? I got you some vests. Well, uh, hey, I'm just here to give you guys another little boost. But you know, you guys are doing a great job. But I still think there's some weird stuff going on in this town. Um, yeah, you might want to take the lead on the shipwreck thing. Uh, all right, let's to to the shipwreck. You notice that there is, in fact a front quarter of a ship and you see a pair of uh, dwarven like almost thug looking guys standing near a a pack turtle you just shoot the arrow it kind of flies over the ship and it comes down and it actually it hits the turtle I punch myself in I the just, foot. I just turn and look. <laughs> I just turn and look at Turk like, really? I'm really... Nice going. You need to get better at that. <laughs> you didn't see that. I, I did see that <laughs> because I can actually see on that side of the boat. That's true. All I'm, right, so uh, do you want to move, Turk? You going to stay in the tree line? I'll move five feet to the left. Five feet to the left. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, looks like we got the dwarves turn. All right, so the... Uh, The dwarves kind of come to their sense now, and he is going to, uh, basically, he's going to run towards the front of the ship and hide behind a little bit more of the debris that's there. There's a boulder kind of sitting in front of the ship a little bit. He is going to peek around that. He is going to pop out his heavy crossbow, and uh, he's going to go for Johnny because Johnny's still in the same spot. He's seen where all that stuff came from because he made eye contact with you earlier. Mm Mm-hmm. That is 14 nope. plus 16. Nope. Uh, disadvantage, because, yeah, that's right. 14 11. plus 16? Is that what you said? No, I said 16 was a total. But, oh, you're like, uh, 14. So now it's actually 11 plus two, so 13. Nope. Dang it. All right, so he also misses with his crossbow. Um, and the other dwarf um, realizes this turtle isn't going anywhere, so he's going to join the melee. Um, he comes to the other side of the ship, and he is going to pop a shot off over in your direction, uh, Farak. No one can see who I'm pointing at when you're listening to audio. <laughs> that is a 13. Nope. Uh, he also misses. These guy, these dwarves are terrible. Um, and uh, we're back to the lizard folk. So all three are going to once again pop up and pop off. Uh, some shots. Pop in and pop off. Pop in and pop off. That sounds dirty. (laughs) Oh, that is... Oh, gosh, even worse. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, it's not fun when the enemy keeps missing. (laughs) It's not fun for me. It's fun for you. It's great for you guys. I'm feeling great. Did they roll a one? So they did that thing where they just kind of pop up out of their hiding spot, shoot it off, and go back down really quick and realize they're not doing so good at that. Mm -mm. Um, and, uh, Varak, it is your turn. I am going to... Uh, and at this point, they're all basically in front of the ship now, just hiding behind debris. I'm going to run 20 feet out there. If there's some debris I can hide behind in the there 20 is, feet range. There is a, uh, 
yeah, there's like a giant like chest that maybe held like clothes and stuff mm -hmm. enough for you to kind of sit behind. Okay, I'm gonna go plop down there. Okay. Uh, and how far you said? So that puts you about 15 feet away from the one who's hiding behind the door. Okay. Uh, and did you say that the javelins went like beyond the? I'm not anywhere near them. If I wanted to, you retreat. you're about 20 feet to your like up and right. I mean they're. There's they're next to them, so like if you went, you'd be right in the middle of all the lizard guys. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to just camp out here for a minute. All right, so do you want to maybe ready in action? Um, I, uh, I mean, my goal is to run up and do a, a a melee attack. So yeah, I mean, you can ready in action to where if someone walks by you, you would do that. But you, yeah, you, know, you never know if that's gonna happen. So you just want to basically improve your yeah, distance. I'm okay, that's totally fine. Yeah. All right, so at this point, you you see Eleanor. Where you guys saw her last, she was in the tree line to your left, but now she appears to be behind the ship. She's made her way over there. Um, and you see her kind of sneak up to the lizard folk that was behind there, and you just see her reach up, cover his mouth, and just drag a blade across the throat nice. as the lizard folk just drops. And you see that none of the others see them, and then she disappears behind the ship again. And Johnny, you're up. Okay. How uh, far away is the one who tried to shoot me? Um, he's still about, uh, well, since he's a little further back than the other guy was, he's about 65 feet. Uh, wait, the one that made eye contact with me? Oh, you're talking about the guy that made eye contact with you? Yeah, he's still 60 feet, but but this time he's not out in the open. He's just peeking around the ship right there. Which okay. Is, which is a 60 point, 60 foot mark. Um, um, what you gonna do? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't really have much. Uh, I guess I could just do Vicious Mockery again, because that doesn't take any spell slots. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm going to go Vicious Mockery again on uh, the one All I right. did before. <clears throat> so he's got to run a save. And there's another one. <laughs> um, same thing. He uh, he senses this weird tingling in his head as he kind of slips, stands up, makes eye contact with Johnny, and he's like, oh, crap. <laughs> as Johnny says. I say... Good, good job, you loser. And nobody likes you. Your friend left, and I, I heard that you are a selfish lover. <laughs> <laughs> and that gives him two. Uh, it was that selfish lover one that got it. Yeah, that that, that, that last little quip uh -huh. really drove home the point. Mm -hmm. So it's two damage. Two damage and disadvantage on his next <laughs> attack. And then I just want to like run forward to the uh to the closest. Or, covered but like far like go as far as i can to get it covered yeah okay yeah there's some some wooden debris there that puts you about 20 feet up okay so you're now within like 40 feet okay um next on the list we got turk how close am i like you said 70 feet or something like that 60 yeah you're in the tree line so i mean one of the lizard guys took a little bit more of an advance um so he's he's probably about 50 feet uh, he's just to the right of uh, Varrock, about, I'll say about 10 feet, and then, but yeah, about 40, 40, 50 feet in front of you. And there's no one around him? No. Oh. I mean, he's still, like, behind some stuff, but you know where he's at. Okay, I'm going to shoot my longbow again at that one. All right, you're going to need to get in a better vantage point, so you need to move, like, maybe to the left a little bit. But I moved to the left before my turn ended. Yeah, but you still not don't have a clean line of shot to him. Fine. Okay, yeah, I move. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, seven plus nine. Seven plus nine? Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, it hits. So, um... <laughs> and... And then, uh, okay, damage? so yeah, I'll do damage and then I'll go from there. Okay, hold on. Ooh. Okay, so 11 damage. Does that... Does that, that kills it. Does that do it? Yep. Okay. You were able to shoot him. And I'm like, him. good. <laughs> he doesn't see it coming and just all of a sudden this arrow just sticks in him. Uh, just, just right, like through the kidney into the heart as he goes through the back and he is goner. How's how's the turtle doing? Uh, turtle is still writhing in pain. <laughs> um, you can hear it still moaning and groaning. 
Uh, so you guys have one lizard folk left and uh, two uh, dwarven thugs. Is my arrow uh, still sticking out of the turtle's foot? Yes. Foot? Someone needs to is. take the arrow out. All right. Uh, it is the dwarves' turn. Um, so we have one on each side. Um, one's going to go ahead and just bum rush um, Varrock because he knows where you're at. He's just going to go straight at you with um, what is he got? He's got a mace. So yeah, he runs up his space, stands right next to you. Mm-hmm. That is a natural twenty. Uh, wait, can 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 your bard against Bruishan do anything? I don't Even think it can against something. Yeah. It can only go to advance him. Now, if this was Lauren, she's got her sorry, Turk, she's got Perry against like the attack damage, but Alright, well, so that's uh yeah, natural twenty. Uh-huh. So he he just raises up, you just see this beast of a dwarf kind of just you 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 didn't know this, but also you just hear these footsteps and you look up and you just see him coming down with this mace as uh-huh. it just you feel the impact. Um and that is going to be I'll just roll them both at the same time. That is 10 points of damage, sir. Wowzers. So you feel just the impact as you guys see this dwarf just come and just lay this mace down on Farrakh. Farrakh takes his impact, falls flat on his back, and as you see, just blood kind of squirt from Farrakh a little bit. Oh, no. And you are you are down. Um, yeah. And the other dwarf is going to go ahead, and he's going to... He is just in a feud with Johnny. <laughs> and he's going to dis using disadvantage shoot his heavy crossbow. <laughs> That's a five. Yes. And eleven. Hey, guess what? He misses again. But this time he mm. is going to improve his uh, position, and he is basically uh, just coming towards for you. But he is now about ten feet in front of you, behind some other debris. Um, and we are up to the lizard folk. So we have one <laughs> lizard guy. Still there. He uh, notices the attack that was on Farrakh and notices an open victim, basically. And he is going to also rush up uh, with How his spear. Left? Ten. Oh, I his, thought you said uh, one. I was no. like... <laughs> Sixteen. You, uh, it, yes, that means you could, you could. You still have that. I have. You have combat inspiration for me with a bardic inspiration. Uh, that is four points of damage. You could, you, uh, well, well, he's running around while I'm trying to explain this. He can use a reaction to roll the d6 and add it to your AC. Oh, did you want to do that? Uh, yeah. Or do you want to take the damage? I mean... Because it was a 16 to hit? Yeah. Yes. And your AC is 14? It's 16. Oh, well, then it would stop it. But you would spend the die. Yeah, which right. it's only good for 10 minutes anyway. I have to use this within 10 minutes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. But 10 minutes is a long time right. in a battle. So. <clears throat> Your hit points are getting low. They though. are. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and use that. Okay. So spend it. Yeah. All you need to do is roll a one. Roll a one? That's all oh. you need so you don't hit your AC. Oh, you rolled a six. Okay, so yeah, he doesn't uh, meet your AC, actually, so we take back what I did on the damage. Uh, you see this spear come at you, and you're able to kind of just slowly, you know, get out of the way as the spear sticks into the ground, and now you have this dwarf and this lizard folk that are just on top right of you. There. Pick yeah. up the spear. Um, Varak, it is now your turn, but you are on your back. Right. Yep. So, to stand up and all that. To stand up is half your action. Half your movement. Sorry, half your movement. Half my movement. Half your movement. Wow. Well, hmm. Okay. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to go into full on rage here uh, and scream, (laughs) Brock Uh, And I'm going to. And I'm like, oh boy. I I get even hairier and even more bear like. And I grow some claws and some teeth. (laughs) And I'm channeling my bear. And what you grew, you grow some teeth. Did you not have any teeth before? They like, nope, mine's gummy. <laughs> and <laughs> gummy, 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 gummy. I am gonna, I'm gonna take my uh, great axe towards. Oh, also with the bear, I'm resistant to all damage except psychic. La da da. Okay, so I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna try and attack uh, the first dude that came up and got me. The dwarf. The dwarf. Yes. Okay. Oh. I thought that was a one. No. 
Uh, 13. 13 on the dwarf. Uh, that yeah. does hit. Uh, thank God. Okay. So, I'm going to do some damage with this guy, not that guy. Maybe this guy. Okay. Uh, Nine. Twelve. Twelve points of damage. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so this says, probably side note, sorry. Uh, when you make a melee weapon attack when in rage, using strength, you gain a bonus to the damage roll that increases as you gain level, blah, blah, blah. So do I add? Oh, the, yeah, you add an extra, I think it's two. An extra two, yeah. Yeah. So that's 14. So that's going to be 14. Damage. Perfect. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to use the other 15 feet to run. Okay. Um, as you run, the lizard folk's going to take an opportunity attack well, on well, you. Point of order, can you run? What's your... Well, you can move 15 feet. Well, didn't his... Well, my speed oh, is 30, yeah, so yeah. it's half. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can, but you're going to take... The lizard folk's going to take an opportunity attack against you as a reaction. Okay, I'm still in rage. So, so you I have... are you're you resistant to damage, it said, right? Yes. So he's gonna take it against you anyways, but you're probably not gonna take any damage. Okay. So you're resistant to it. So, so blah blah blah. Yeah, he doesn't even hit anyways. Okay, so yeah, awesome. you move 15 feet away. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um okay. I need see you, not you, but I need Johnny and Turk to No. First roll a perception check. Uh, 15, sir. I got a 16 plus 2. 16 plus 18. Two. What'd you say you get again, Turk? I'm sorry. Uh, 15. 15? Okay, so yeah, you both. Okay. Um, so you both notice to the left of the tree line, um, you notice from the back of the boat, you see Eleanor. Uh, she's making her way to the tree line, but it looks like you could tell she's trying to sneak away. You see her, she has a sack kind of carried over her back as she's also hauling a chest on her left side, making her way for the tree line. I knew it. All right. Um, Varrock, yes. because of where you are at right now, I need you to go ahead and make me a wisdom saving throw. <gasps> okay, that is going to be 13. You're good. Switch. All right, uh, Johnny, you're up. Okie dokie. Uh, how far away is Eleanor from me? Yeah, what are you gonna do about uh, because of where you are, she's at. She's about a hundred feet. A hundred feet. Yeah. Surely you jest. I had no jest. <laughs> um, I mean, she's past the boat to the left, almost to the tree line, and you're at the bottom, towards the beach still. So you're a good distance away. Hold on, maybe I've got this all wrong in my head. I thought I was to the right of the boat. Like, you are. Okay. To south. Right, so like the boat's okay. in the middle. You're st you're still at the entrance of the cove where you guys came in. Okay, you haven't moved at all. And then if you look straight ahead of you and just to the left, a little in the center of this cove area is the ship. Mm -hmm. And then she's past that to the left, to the north uh, west, basically okay. heading towards the tree line. So she's past the ship, way over there. Okay. So as far, as far as two distances go, you two are the farthest apart from everything. Super cool. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. I really, that is a bummer. Um, because I, I was going to cast Suggestion, have her come back. <laughs> but that is way too far. Um, how far away are you, are you Turk? Uh, um, Turk is just to the left of you still, about five feet. No, she's actually about 20 feet now to the left of you, so that makes her no, about 80. No, I'm more towards the trees, I thought. You are still in the trees. You move to the left about 20 feet from Johnny, uh, which puts her about 80 feet away from you. She's still at the far distance. Varrock's the closest. He's about 50 feet from her. How far does your... Um, Crossbow? No, the... 30 feet. Uh, no, is is that how far that thing you're going to do? You can dash okay. 60 feet. But then that would So you're going to say she's in, at 90 feet then if I dash 60? If you dash 60, she'll be at 40. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you say she's 90 feet away, if I dash, then she'd be within my range. She would be within your range, but then you'd be used your whole action to dash over there. Unless you have a bonus action, unless you do something. No. I'll try and do that on mine. Yeah, I gotta. I I just look at Turk and I'm like, hey, uh, go handle that. And then I'm going to 
just go after my buddy, my, my dwarven. <laughs> the same guy. Okay, so he's same guy. Like I said, he's about ten feet in front of you, behind some more stuff. So. Right. I'm gonna run and like jump up over his over the barrier and like bring my uh, cutlass down on him. All right, do it. Uh, Roll with advantage. Okay. Because you're surprising him. Surprise! Nine plus four is 13. Uh, yes, that does hit. Cool. That's a six. Six plus two, so eight, eight. damage. Okay, perfect. Good work. Uh, All right, uh, do you want to move? Oh, you already moved. So you moved about 10 feet. Mm-hmm. Um, can I get to the boat? From where you are? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you can get right up to the boat. I'm going to do that. Okay, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's a two. Plus anything? Plus a big old Oh, you're going to have zero. to roll a D100. Can you roll a D100 for me? Nope. I want you to babble, because I had to babble like a million times. <laughs> 27. Oh, that's a new one. <laughs> Just like to mix things up, you guys, you know? All right, 27. Uh, <laughs> the character becomes incapacitated and spends the duration screaming, laughing, or weeping. Oh, gosh. You want to scream, laugh, or weep? I'm going to... I'm going to weep. <laughs> so as you, you just guys see just, just John, <laughs> you guys see Johnny running to the boat, and as he makes it to the ship, um, he just drops to his knees and just starts weeping uncontrollably you as just, you guys think, maybe, hey, maybe he just really loves I'm, ships. I'm crying and muttering, why didn't you love me? Why wasn't I good enough? You're just thinking, reminiscing of Grampy Tuesday. Bards, I, bard, being a bard is a job. Why does everyone hate me? I'm just, it's, yeah. It's, very, it's finally gotten to him. Yeah. All right, Turkey, you are up. And see, uh, my maternal instinct po- kicks in. I don't know whether to take care of him or to run after a homegirl. So. <laughs> I just yell, leave me alone. <laughs> You're ruining my life, <laughs> Dad. It's not a phase. <laughs> I, I'm a bard. <laughs> I give him a pat on the back Okay. and hand him an inspirational card that says there, so are there. you gonna run to him because that would be oh he's not pretty much your whole action no he's at the boat oh, he's at the ship now oh okay i say there there i scream it and then air pat him on the back <laughs> um and then i use uh dash to if i use dash to get up to the eleanor how much she's 80 feet okay from you and how what's your what's your movement 30. So that'd be 60 feet. So that puts her 20 feet away from you. And, and you have a bonus action of action surge, so you oh still no. could attack. Well, I don't know if I want to attack. I just kind of want to... You can do non-lethal damage. I want to... What's what's that? I mean, you can attack and like hurt her, maybe incapacitate her. Well, the thing is, she's not close enough to grapple, or she'd have to still use a, a dexterity weapon because she's still 20 feet away. Yeah, but she could say, like, longbow, and I'm shooting her in the knee. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. All right, so, and then I kind of, but I kind of want to yell at her first and be like, what are you doing? You were the chosen one. Yeah, and so I run up there and I try to get her attention. Okay, so you dash up there, so you're about 20 feet from her now. Yeah. Okay, what do you want to say? Uh, hey, wait, what are you doing? I thought, I thought we were in this together. She turns around and says, oh, uh, uh. Uh, in, 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 inquisitor stuff. I, I, I just got to take this in. Don't lie you know. to me. Uh, Friends don't lie. Screw you. And she starts heading towards the trees again. Okay, and then I try to shoot her in the knee. Then. All right, roll uh, your hit. Uh, that is a nineteen, and I'm like, stop right there. Pew. All right, roll damage. Oh goodness, I don't want to really hurt her. Um, eleven. I'm really good at shooting things in the leg. I did it with the turtle, and I'm doing it with her. So <laughs> that, always aim for the leg. <laughs> that uh, that definitely hurt her. Um, as it goes through the kneecap and just <gasps> mm. um, I shout. I didn't. I don't know my own strength, but you, I mean that was kind of a douche move. <laughs> yeah. So as it goes through her kneecap, she just lets out a scream and just 
falls to the ground and drops everything that she had, and she's just clutching her knee right now. Hey, homebrewers, it's me, your Dungeon Master Corey, just taking another quick minute in the middle of this podcast to say hello. Uh, Yeah, so the holidays are over and we're back. So hello, 2018, and hopefully you guys enjoyed your holiday break and are ready to get back into some more episodes because I know we are and we all had a wonderful break, uh, got plenty of rest, and uh, we're ready to get back into things. So yeah, new, uh, new episode today. And uh, so we should be having maybe one, maybe two more episodes uh, where we're going to be here in Reef of Madness, and then we'll jump into a new arc after that, a new adventure, and kind of see where we go and where it takes us. But Reef of Madness has been great so far, and we've loved every minute of it. And like I said, one, maybe two more episodes of Reef of Madness, and then we'll jump into a new arc and see where our players end up. But yeah, we're glad to be back. Um, glad the holidays are over and we can get back into some more Dungeons and & Dragons. Uh, and we're excited about that. But hey, guess what? Let's talk about sponsorships. Uh, so for you guys here at Homebrew Adventures, uh, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. And it's pretty cool. I mean, you get to sit and listen to a book. Uh, you can work and listen at the same time and get multitask, do cool things. Um, how about I recommend another book for you guys? Uh, one of my personal favorites, uh, you should check out Stardust by Neil Gaiman. It is amazing. And if you've never read it slash listened to it, now's your chance. So to download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash homebrew adventures. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash homebrew adventures for your free audiobook. I, I think you should do it. Anyways, that's all for me. That's all I got for you. So let's get back to the adventure. Deserters get herders. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just make that up? Yeah. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else you want to do? Uh, I guess you can't really do anything else. Huh? So if you spent your action surge, so you get that back after short rest. Um, and the dwarf's turn. Um, yeah. So uh, Varak, you still have one on your tail. Yeah. Um, he's not going to chase you this time. He just wants to shoot you. He just pulls up his crossbow. And that is a 12. Oh, sorry. 13? Nope. All right. That misses. Um, but this time, the other dwarf is going to go for Johnny. Because <laughs> there's this weird feud between this dwarf and Johnny. <laughs> and that is an 18 plus 4. Why would four. he shoot somebody who's sobbing uncontrollably? That's just mean. <laughs> so 22. Yeah, you can't do anything but sob anyways. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, that is. I just, I just, I just shake them, shake like sit there and nod my head and say, <laughs> "I deserve this." <laughs> so as he is sobbing, you guys just watch as this dwarf just slowly walks oh behind God. him, holding his mace out, dragging across the sand. <laughs> and as he gets to Johnny, he just pulls back and lets it fly, Heartless. and he hits him for five points of damage. <clears throat> As you guys see, Johnny just take this hit and fall face first into the sand and then kind of gets back up and just sits there weeping still. Um, it is the lizard folk's turn. Um, this one lizard folk uh, saw what uh, you did and didn't really care. So he sees this beast of a bear running around and he decides he's going to go after that with a spear. And that is... 18. My goodness. Yeah. All right. So he hits you. Am I still in rage? You're still in a rage. Oh, so yeah, that's three points of it just bounces off your hide, I guess. All righty. Yeah. Boom. Uh, it's not metallic. The, that's the noise hide makes. <laughs> uh, hey, Bear, you're up next. All right. <clears throat> Bear. So. Man. Uh, 
Eleanor, she's down for the count. She's she's hurting. Yeah, she is clutching her knee. Hmm. I got I got her. All right, I'm going to go after the one that just tried to shoot me. The lizard folk. Yep. Right. So yeah, you turn around and you face it like a bear. Like a bear. Like a, like a bear. Bear man. <laughs> All right, go ahead and roll. Dang it. <laughs> Every time. We're playing on a tiny table. All right, that's going to be 18. 18. Yes, that hits. What is your damage? That's going to be. <laughs> Five. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, eight. Eight. All right. He uh, takes a pretty good hit as um, he kind of just uh, gets his neck broken as he gets hit. No. His neck is broken? His neck is broken as he falls to the ground dead. Yes. Why? Oh, okay, good. Um, like... And as they fall, you see that these two dwarves are like starting to panic and mm-hmm. they start running towards the pack turtle to grab everything off of the turtle as quickly as they can. And uh, it is Eleanor's turn. Uh, did, first, did you oh, want sorry. to do anything yeah. else? Can I go ahead and move towards that direction? I see them running towards a pack turtle. Yes, yeah, so you're going to chase after yeah. them. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you start heading that direction. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now it is Eleanor's turn. So she, uh, first off, she just breaks the arrow, so that way there's not this long stick sticking out. But she leaves, you know, the first part of it in there. As she just snaps the arrow off, and she says, "You're going to regret doing this." Um, and then she, um, basically she. From the, her back, she pulls the bow that's wrapped around her and grabs an arrow really quick and from the ground tries to shoot one off at Wait, you, Turk. Wait, isn't she too close to do that? She's 20 feet away. Um, we'll say she ha- um, she's going to get disadvantaged from shooting off her back and it's still a little close as well, so she'll still get disadvantaged. But... First one's over there. Then, oh, two. Nice. Plus four, so six. Well, when that you hits, know, right? That hits. <laughs> <laughs> um, she shoots it off and she misses you and just sticks into the ship. Um, as... I say, what am I regretting? I regret nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and so she starts to try and you know crawl away as she is pulling this bag of stuff with her still. And uh, Johnny, you are up. Do you want to sit there and cry, or do you want to sit there and do cry? I, can I? Can I? Am I okay? This is a good, genuine question. Within this uh, madness, can I move? Because I would really like to just like go over to the pack turtle and cry with it. Yeah, you can move. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I just go over like tears, and I like lay down next to the pack turtle and like cry with the turtle. Yeah. That's yeah. Basically, I, all you know to do in your life is cry yeah. and walk. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's your full that's, length of incapacitation. That's what I do. I relate with the turtle, and I'm like, <laughs> as these dwarves I, are like, "What is this guy?" I'm doing? crying, and I'm like, "I know. I feel like everyone puts so much weight on me. <laughs> I feel all this pressure, and then I get hurt. Like you got hurt. <laughs> I just, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry." Do you guys cry. embrace? No, the turtle just looks at me like <laughs> I don't even hurt that much anymore. All right, Turk, you are up. So I'm 20 feet away from her? Yes. Okay, so... Wait, hold, do I get to save against that? Now, my turn's over or no? Um, not yet. Okay. All right, so I'm still trying to reason with her. So I go... I use more of my movement to go up to her and just be like, what's your deal? Like, I didn't mean to kneecap you that hard. <laughs> <laughs> but... You were like the most polite fighter ever. <laughs> I didn't mean to kneecap you. Like, but sorry, you I kicked your butt, man. It's just I didn't. I don't know my own strength, but I, I am trying to she figure. She says, "How dare you shoot an imperial guard, especially in the knee?" All right, oh, but what imperial guard just encourages a battle and then you know scoots? With the boogie. Um, she <laughs> do that loot scooting boogie. She starts. I was she starts. Say uh, that, but I didn't. You know, gritting her teeth and just getting more and more angry. Uh, go ahead and roll a uh, investigation check. Oh dang it! I have eight. Um, you know what? Uh, at the moment, it is not enough. 
At the, oh, I thought you were going to go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Dashing your hopes. Um, she just says, wait till I tell my captain about this. Who's your captain? The Imperial Inquisitor. What's his name? I'm not going to tell you that. Do you know his name? Sounds like you're the Imperial Inquisitor right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. She says, you will get nothing out of me. And she still starts to kind of scoot away. Like step on her leg or something. Don't let her just like. Okay. I, pour some yeah. salt in there. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm going to pour salt step on Step on the kneecap that's been shot. I do kind of step on her pant leg. <laughs> Uh, she's like, "What? Are you, get off my pants!" <laughs> Talk to me. These are nice pants. I just bought these pants. Can I? Can I do another roll, like perception or something? You already did. Well, um, are, are we still in initiative? We're still in initiative. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that was you already did an action. An, so wait, can you make an exception? No. I've tried to figure this out without resorting. We'll to get violence. back to you. We'll get back to you. You're a fighter. <laughs> I, you fight. I'm, so she she's still trying to reason okay. with Eleanor. But so. but that's not. I I can still do an action. Right? Sure. Okay. So I. What what's going on? Okay. Out so you there? can roll a perception check as an action if you want. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Since I told you to roll the investigation, so I won't make make that be your action. Okay, thirteen. All right. Plus anything. That uh, that is. Plus. Okay, I suppose, okay. That's just so rude. Sure. I just want to make sure you're adding your bonuses. Okay, um, you notice that um, as she has fallen, kind of, you know, stuff is scattered everywhere, and her clothes are kind of. Um, you notice that uh, as her sleeve drops down, she that, have the dark mark. <laughs> she does not have the dark mark, <laughs> but she does have a mark of what a prisoner would have. I knew it. Yep. And you know, before she was supposed to tell the truth, and and you rolled really good on that. Remember? I do and, remember. And she just, just one more up, thing for me to cry about. That's <laughs> keep crying, buddy. Oh, it's those tears. All right, Four gates are open. I knew it. So. Okay, so as you're still there with her, um, it is now going to go to the dwarves' turn. Um, they are collecting all their things, and since you're there, one of them is going to collect their stuff while one makes an attack. Um, so really, you don't take any damage at all. And that's what it says. All right. That's what it says. Does um, it really say that? It it doesn't, but it says that. <laughs> it it doesn't, that. but it says it. it Who says, says that? that? The book says it. The book says it. All right. Do one of the dwarves take pity on me and crying and just like give me something? Um, no. One of them's gonna go ahead and attack you since it can't attack the bear. Um, typical. Typical. Oh, and it rolled typical a two. Typical bear. So that's not gonna hit. Uh, the other one is gonna go ahead and just it grabs some stuff and it's gonna make a beeline for the trees on the north. All right. So now we are at the lizard folk that is dead. <laughs> so hey, Varrock, it's your turn, sir. All right. I'm going after that. The one that attack, tried to attack me. All right, so you gain up on it. Yep. And it's going to be... That hits for yeah. sure. 17 plus 5. All right, roll your damage, sir. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. uh, eight, 18. Ooh, uh, that you don't do killed it. And I don't know what will. So you guys see the scene of this... Ba well... I guess you don't see it, and you're still crying, so no one sees the scene. Great, but this bear just oh, oh, rips apart your this Your time door. to shine. Yep, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be come joining you. So the one you chase down. Crying. So there's still one left at the turtle, um, and this one is dead. The other one sees this going on, and he's gonna try to make a, a beeline to the south to run away. Why so but many beelines? I don't know why I say beeline. I just do. <laughs> um, uh, is he it's... close enough? Or is that only an opportunity attack if it's the one it, it's attacking? Not a, yeah, it's not an okay. opportunity attack because you're not in the same square since you okay. ran far from it. All right, and we're going to Eleanor's turn. Um, she grabs a dagger from her pocket since all you're doing is stepping on her pant leg. I got off her pant leg because she told me not to, and I'm nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, she takes a dagger, and she pulls it uh. from her boot, <laughs> and she is going to take a swing at you. <clears throat> and that is 14 plus 2, so 16. Uh, if it meets, it beats. Yes. Oh, okay, shoot. but a dagger is not that much damage, so she is gonna slice you. I, but she barely, like, barely gets your shin for one point of damage. I laugh. I'm and, like, what are you trying to do, chump? 
<laughs> a mere scratch. <laughs> Um, and you see her try to, as she distracts you with the swipe and you kind of take the, to the knee, you see her try to tuck something into like her robe. Um, as she Forever. says, please just take the stuff and just, just let me be on my way. I'll leave it here. Uh, no sister. <laughs> um, and, and it is Johnny's turn. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go ahead and try to make a saving throw. Normally you have to be healed by a spell to get out of your madness, but I like the saving throw idea. So. Well, especially since I'm the only one that can cast <clears throat> that her, spell. Yeah, the right. lesser restoration spell. <laughs> All right. Ironic. Don't you think? 16. Do I have yep, plus anything? Good. Nope, you're good. Okay. You're out. Um, so that was an action. Okay, so as a free action, I would just like to yell, like, look around, and I'm assuming, can I see them? Uh, you can now that you're okay. out of your thing. Yeah, I just yell, like... Tie her up. Yeah. All right. Um. So you yell that. You can move if you want. Or do you want to stay? Uh, well, actually, I guess if you move, the dwarf's going to take an opportunity attack against you. Um. Yeah, no, I'm just going to lay with the turtle. How do, you, how do you feel? Is that cathartic at all, getting all that out? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Turkey, you're up. Okay, yeah. I actually was going to try and, uh, like, maneuver, like her to stay but get some more information out of her so i do have uh 50 feet of rope so how can i well can i just tie her up yeah you can do a strength test against her mm oh okay how do i do that just roll a d20 plus your strength and i'll do a d20 plus her strength oh boys she's gonna try to just struggle she shouldn't she be a disadvantage because she's hurt yeah well this is a strength con contest so I let, but she's on the ground. She also, yeah, but you have to bend down and get on the ground. She also to took an, an arrow through the knee. <laughs> That's true. That would have hurt. Dis disadvantage. No! <sighs> oh, she rolled a natural 20 on the second one, but it was 8 on the first one. So that's 8 plus her strength, so 10. Um, You're pretty strong, right? What's your strength say up there, top left? I, I know what it says, but I'm trying to see if I can oh, re-roll anything. Nope. What'd you get? I thirty. I, I got a five. Total. Yes. Yeah. So you oh. you guys see uh, Turk is just trying to struggle with getting this rope around her, and she's she's fighting back. Scorman. Yeah, she, uh, she's fighting one handed as she tries to like still hold her like robe together as she's like fighting you back, and so you haven't failed at this. You're just struggling to get it. So you guys just see her still struggling. Help. Um. <laughs> Yep, and now we are back to this dwarf who is, um, uh, he's not going to mess with you. He's just running. So he he's running to the south. He uses his full movement. Um, and now we're back to Vrock. Uh, so there's no one at the ship, right? Not at the moment. Mm -hmm. How far away is, uh, is uh, Turk and Eleanor? They're on the opposite side, so they're about 70, 80 feet. Yeah. Hmm. I had to use... My movement plus dash. Do you have any turn. extra movement with your rage? I don't think so. Nope. And the other one just ran away. So now yeah, it's he's me running. With the turtle. Uh, is the turtle still trying to get away? No, he's injured. We're buddies he's just now. Down for the count. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm gonna roll a seduction check on the turtle. Oh God. <laughs> uh. Bow chicka bow. Uh. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't, I, I, I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna dash in. All right, so what's your normal speed? 30? 30. So yeah, you can dash 60 and just get kind of close to him. Yeah. Um, as you dash, as you're crossing, you get halfway across, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh, so boy, once you get back to where the ship is at. 19. You are good. And you make it past hey, the son. ship. All right. Um, all right. Eleanor's turn. Um, she is going to contest you again. So go ahead and we're going to do a strength check. What is she trying to do? Keep you from putting the rope around her. I already did. I know. She's still trying. You didn't get it yet. She's still trying to keep you from it. Oh, that's a natural 20, but she gets disadvantage. <laughs> oh, that's a two. So she <laughs> rolled a four total. Uh, 16. You tie her up. Yay. Ah. Oh. All right, Johnny. Um, 
I'm going to. I don't know how this would work. I want to. I want to. <laughs> I thought you were going to seduce the turtle. <laughs> I, uh, mm, uh, I want to heal the turtle. Okay. So, like, I don't know if he really has, he or she has hit points. But like, Everything has hit points. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, I just, I touch the turtle mm-hmm. knee. Like, Tenderly. I break off the arrow, push it through, and then I do uh, cure wounds. Okay. Um. So. So, yeah, you don't have to roll anything. We'll, yeah, okay. we'll, yeah, that's, you, yeah that's, I was like, do I have to roll? Yeah, or? no. You uh yeah you you are able to heal this turtle and this turtle just kind of stands back up on that leg and it just slowly moves its head to you as it kind of just nuzzles and I its said, head. And I say friend. And then it takes a big chomp <laughs> out of your foot. Too bad uh, if Rock wasn't here. He can speak to animals. Yeah, well, I don't. I speak the language of love. <laughs> uh, do you want to do anything else? Um, can I just investigate what's on the, the turtle's back? Uh, well, like you already pers- used an action. Yeah, but what, I mean... It'd still be an action if you're going to roll. What? Yeah. Well, I guess you don't have to roll. It's right there in plain sight. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, yeah, it's uh, it's loot. It's basically just loot. You like see gold, chests. gems. Uh, you see chests. All right. Cool. All right. Um, you still got one guy running away. Um, and Turk, you're up. Okay, so... Okay, so I have plus five for persuasion. Should I just try and maybe persuade her into telling me something? Oh, oh I can handle that. Okay. Quick, for Johnny, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, how far is the other dwarf that ran away? Oh, it's very far from you. It's far? You're uh, completely far away, yeah. A hundred plus feet. Okay. But she's restrained, right? Yeah. And the dwarf, are we agreeing to just let that dwarf run away? Uh, I guess so. So, okay. can we yeah, just be out of so initiative? Are we, out of... we are out of initiative. Cool. Dwarf is gone. Um, I mean, do y'all want to I uh make your way up here? Yeah, I kind of yeah. want to unload the turtle and let him go. Okay. We don't want to keep him as our, as our buddy? Where are we going after this? We don't know. It might be a desert. You want to see a turtle in a desert? <laughs> I don't know. Could make for an interesting story. Could be a great death for a turtle. Uh, and then, yeah. And so we do that, and then uh, I go and cast Suggestion on our little friend. Okay. The turtle? No, the, the Eleanor. <laughs> the Eleanor. You make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw? This is on Eleanor, right? Correct. Okay. Eight. Does not so all right so my suggestion is tell us everything she knows about the treasure what she has give us everything you stole from the ship tell us what you know and then go turn yourself in okay and so she'll do that and it lasts up to eight hours or until the action has been performed so once she turns herself in this she's no longer under gotcha okay yeah so she says um she all of a sudden the fight kind of drops out of her as her face calms and almost in a robotic sense you know she's like my name is beatrix sansap i i am a th- i am a thief <laughs> me and my gang have been trying to find treasure and this was a rival gang and i was just trying to get it before they got it and she says um This was a cultist ship. We'd been tracking it, and we knew there would be many fine items. Beware of the the figurehead. And she gives all the treasure she had in the bag back. Well, she's still tied up at this point, but she says, you can have all the treasure. It's just gold and and trinkets. Um, If you check my pocket, you will find something of high value. And then, zoink. (laughs) <laughs> Zoink, that's the official term. <laughs> um, you pull out of her robe that she was wearing. Oh, also, she says, I stole these clothes from an Imperial soldier as I broke away. A that, dur. That, that soldier was a dweeb. <laughs> um, and you get a, uh, it's a sextant. It is uh, a, pardon? A, sex, a sextant. I don't okay. want it. <laughs> it is it is a tool that is used for measuring distance and mm-hmm. like, you know, on ships they use it to like, you know, you look through it and you can see how far stuff is and it's like a nautical thing. 
Um, it is a naughty cool. thing. Naughty cool. I was gonna... <laughs> this is a naughty nautical thing. Uh, she says, but this is special. And she says, you might want to investigate it. And then she says, I must go turn myself in. I must turn myself in. Do the right thing. I must do the right thing. <laughs> okay, so it's a... She says, also, I found this in a brass chest in this ship. I must turn myself in. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so we're going to investigate that? Um, do you want to untie her so she can go turn herself in? Her legs are free. That's true. Uh, but she only has one leg right now because the other one had an arrow through it. Uh, she can limp. <laughs> yeah, she limps away. Um, she says, thanks for making me a splint, jerks, and just kind of limps all the way. Mm. And who knows if she'll make it, if she'll lose the amount of blood or not. But she's on her way to turn herself in. <laughs> I mean, do we care at this and, point? And she's, I say, Sarnara, sucker. She's a rude dude. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna investigate the, that that uh, that naughty cool sex. All right, dance. Who wants to investigate <laughs> it? Naughty cool sex toy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, investigation. I rolled a ten plus something. What's your something? Two. Two. So twelve. What yeah. do you get, Varak? Seventeen. Seventeen. All right, Varak, you study it, and uh, you you know that this sextant uh, has some. Uh, you feel like there's there might be some magical properties to this, but since none of you are magic users, really, mm-hmm. well, I guess you are, but you didn't Bruh. you didn't roll a good enough check on that <laughs> to see the magic properties. But uh. um, or I'll, I'll I'll allow you to roll an Arcana check on it here in a minute. Um, but you, as you're studying this sextant, you notice that there are some weird carvings into this that are etched into the bronze, mm-hmm. uh, and you notice that this is kind of a weird circular shape. With you know just some odd like the the telescope pointing on this side and the the compass pointing on this side and it has markings that were very similar to something you noticed earlier on the uh, obelisk on the obelisk. Mm. Okay, uh, roll your arcana check. Yeah, it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe you want to take this just to a magic user. He'll probably tell you what you can do with it. But for now, we're off to see the wizard. I, st- I start crying wizard. again. I'm like, oh, I must have the madness again. <laughs> And I'm like, no, this is just you. This is real um, life. <laughs> so what do you guys want to do? Uh, you have the turtle that you unpacked. Um, how do we disperse uh Do you want to findings? search and see what loot is around here? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, sure. So um, can, I, won't, I won't make you roll anything, well, obviously. quickly. But, yes. Can I do any other rolls to see if this, because I have the possession of the, the sex toy. And uh, can I make sure it doesn't, like, it won't, like, possess me kind of like, you know, like the ring or something? You wouldn't know. I wouldn't know? You're not a magic user, so you wouldn't. Oh, um, shoot. You can't tell magical properties. Okay, so I wrap it in uh, a piece of cloth. Okay, so you just, put it just for safe, just to be safe. Okay, so I don't yeah. want to actually touch it. Absolutely. Um, we're, okay, so you guys are on the left side of the ship now. Um, all the treasure was with the turtles. Um, there may be more stuff on the ship. So what do you guys want to look at first? Um, I think what we need to focus on is giving the turtle a name and then adopting it as our own. I, Tur- Turtleton. <laughs> <laughs> this is my brother. Turtleton. So Turtleton? Is Turtleton. Nice. Yeah. Right. So you guys. I vote against. Free Turtleton. I vote against having a pet turtle. <laughs> Uh, the turtle is slowly making its way back to the sea. And then I'm like, they grow up so fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I, let him, um, I let him go because that's what you got to do, do we, you know? Do we... Is there a dead dwarf? There is one dead dwarf. Okay, so can we, we like, loot the bodies? Sure. All right. You want to loot the bodies first? Uh, on the dead dwarf... Also, real quick, while they're doing that, I want to, like, check their like ears or anything to see if they have anything like plugged up because I don't understand why we keep going mad mm-hmm. and I don't know if it's like a I think it's hearing with, thing. Well, that's what I was wondering. Is it when we cross in front of the ship? It's when we got close to the ship, but I don't know if it's like a weird like, I mean, I want to basically like also investigate their bodies to see if they have something special that ke- kept them from going mad okay. other than just being oh, a check. That's a good point. Absolutely. Um. So right now there is uh, 
there's like four lizard folk at the front of the ship on the ground dead. There's the dead dwarf like farther south of it that was struck down. Uh, there's a couple lizard folk on the north. Which ones do you want to look at? We look at all of them. Which ones do you want to look at first? We split up and look at them. Okay, who's going to Well, I don't know if I'm going to split up because if I have, I don't know if I want to have to roll. All right, so we'll start with uh, one of the lizard people. All right, so all of you? Yeah. All of you make a wisdom saving throw. No, I no, I said I wasn't. I said so you're I sticking was, back? Okay, yeah. so you guys walk towards the front of the ship where the lizard folk are and need to make a wisdom saving throw. When we went to go check? Like, yeah, just, but I'll tell you how what happens. Ten. Ten. All right, ten. Uh, yeah, so I'll explain what happens first. So first, you are looking at these lizard folk. Um, you notice that most lizard folk kind of have like a greenish color to them. Uh, these guys are more flushed out gray skin. Um, and you can see kind of they're a little more veiny where you can see kind of the blue blood flowing through them. Uh, you can tell something is maybe kind of warped them to where they're not as normal. Um, but now I need you guys, since you failed, to both roll a D100. 55. 55. Me. 62. 55 and 62, so 55. Um, the character must use his or her action each round to attack the nearest creature. <gasps> Is Johnny. Um, and That's you were what? Terrible. 62. 62. Uh, you experience vivid hallucinations and have disadvantage on ability checks. Oh, boy, we're about to get real nasty. <laughs> and you are noticing a kind of change happen in these two. Um, shoot. <clears throat> I wish I, I... I acquired, as a third level, I did acquire some Tinker's Tools. Would that help? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would help. I'm just kidding. Uh, shoot. Um, I don't know what to do. Uh... How long does it last? Ten minutes. No. Uh, I think we just go ahead and sleep this one off. I'm going to try to stab you with my dagger. Yep. Okay. Eight plus four. No. Okay. All right, you miss. <laughs> I try to stab you with my dagger. No. Seven plus four. No. I try to stab you with my dagger. Okay, what was his thing? He has to attack. He has to attack the nearest thing. So okay, you're still so standing next to so him. Run away. Yeah, plus I, well, four. I move away. Uh, okay. That last one hit though. So what was it? Seventeen plus four. Okay. <laughs> so roll damage. Three points of damage. Okay, I, I run away. <laughs> what you and you're hallucinating though. So you might see me as some. What does he see him as? I don't know. Or what what, do you what see is the him hallucinations? As? A big my friends steak. that's now stabbing me. No, you don't see that. You're hallucinating. I see my childhood friend stabbing me. Um, I chase after you. <laughs> oh my god! So I'm going Turk, to die. You're just watching this happen. What do you do? Uh, I film it. <laughs> <laughs> she films it in Chance World. So on what? Uh, man, I'm really at a loss with what to Wait, do. Wait, so which way did you run? Uh, did you run toward Turk? Don't, no. don't tell him. Or away from Turk. North, south, east, or west. I ran not towards Turk. All right, so say north. Yeah, sure. Do you chase after him? Yeah. All right, as you guys get about 50 feet away, uh, you feel your body kind of calm down, and you both are out of it. And then I would like to use healing word. Okay. On uh, on your friend Varrock. On my friend Varrock here. <laughs> I don't know what came over me. <laughs> um, which is, let me look that up real quick. I believe it's 1d4. Uh, yeah, 1d4 plus my spellcasting ability modifier. All right. Um, so you'll get that damage back. Uh, eight. Sweet. Wait, no, my modifier is six. So nine. Perfect. Are you about out of spell slots now? Nope. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, I've got two left. All right. So, I've what used do you want to do? First now? level and one second level. So, you notice there's nothing, or there's weird discoloration to the lizard folk, nothing plugged in their ears, nose, nothing like that. Um, so, you still have the treasure where the turtle was at, and you still have the back of the ship, the back of the destroyed part of the ship. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is it worth it? I don't know because 
That sounds risky. Here's the other question. Do we actually want to take this loot? Oh, okay, wow. Well. I mean... I think we need to probably go find, like, a wizard that can decipher this thing that I have. I mean, I'm just saying, I, a lot of people have been acting weird, and so, why? I, well, I mean, I think the loot is, I think this stuff is enchanted. Yeah, we could find a wizard, but, like, how are we going to lock this up to keep other people from, you know, getting um... crazy? I mean, she said that there were rival bandits. There's going to be more. Why don't we? Why don't we just go find those guards again? The Imperial guards. They seemed like nice people, and just tell them about it up here and leave the loot and let them deal with it. And tell them that we found the lady. Yeah. Well, she we should be her. turning them herself in. She might be dead, but yeah. <laughs> so let's let's. Yeah, maybe we head back that way because if she was yeah. headed that way and then she died, we can like at yeah. least yeah, bring her true. back to her. Or so you're leaving all the loot. Yeah, if it well, like well, might... Yeah, I think it's enchanted. I, I don't like think we should, should mess with it really, honestly. Okay. Is there like, any keep, way keep the keep the the the, the, the sex, sex thing? thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, you uh you guys leave everything there. I um, wish there was some way that we could kind of. I could set the boat on fire. I was thinking I about know. that. Yeah, just before we go, I could set it on fire. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, just, do that. I, I I cast Prestidigitation a lot because it's a cantrip and it doesn't use any spell slots. <laughs> uh, you see the ship just kind of, you know, little sparks of fire start on around all around it because you can't because Prestidigitation or whatever it is doesn't cause a huge fire, yeah. but all the little ones you keep yeah. casting eventually death by a thousand paper. Cuts. Exactly. Uh, yeah, this ship starts to go in flames, and you notice that that little figurehead on the front of the ship. As it burns and starts to, you know, disassemble, that same blue light that you saw shoot up out of the crab goes up in the sky and heads towards the direction Good of call, that man. island where the crab was at. Um, and you see some of it come up out of the treasures as well, and all the blue light just disappears. Change of plan. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna take that loot. <laughs> take all the loot, sir. All right. So the loot that you pick or at least up, all that we can handle carry. Yeah. So you find three treasure chests filled with a hundred gold pieces each. Oh man. Uh, you find a bunch of little figurines. Uh, six of them that are still intact. A bunch of little pieces. Uh, you find a bunch of little bags of gold. Each one holding about ten gold pieces each. Say about five of those. Five each or just five between the five little bags of ten gold pouches and then the three chests full of a hundred gold each. Uh you find a few little gems. Um and on the shoreline you see Turkey see this kind of glittery something glitter and shining in the light. And as you move closer, you recognize this this feather that's <gasps> washed up on shore. <laughs> I fall to my knees. <laughs> <laughs> Has he taken the beauty? I go and grab my estranged feather. <laughs> All right. So uh, you guys want to head back to town? Yes. Yes. All right. So you guys head back. Um, you do notice there's a little bit of a blood trail on the way back. Um, but it seems like she made it all the way. You didn't okay. find her body, but you do notice okay. that there's a blood trail pretty much all the way back to town. Uh, so as you get back to village, uh, back to village. <laughs> as, as you get back to the village, mm-hmm. uh, you notice that there is now a little bit of commotion in town. Um, you see on horseback this kind of noble looking uh, female on this horse. Um, and around her, you see uh, 12 lo- uh, that guards that look just like those Imperial guards. So you see 12 Imperial guards standing around this uh, who... Seems to be she might be the Imperial Inquisitor, hmm. the actual one. You notice that one of those uh, guards that's with her is one of the ones that you ran into. That was the, the kind of the boss guy that you ran into earlier. I wave. Uh, he, he's part of them. <laughs> uh, and as you guys return, um, you see that uh, Eleanor or Beatrix, as she is known, is being questioned. And you see, <clears throat> excuse me, she is now back in her feisty fighting mood. Um, and she uh, basically points at you guys as you're walking into, and the Inquisitor looks at you guys and says, Thank you for capturing this thief. <laughs> um, and she hops down from her steed 
um and she's you know all noble like and uh with authoritative and walks towards you all and says um we've been meaning to uh to investigate that shipwreck uh we just we're looking for her first um i see that you have found some stuff uh, from the shipwreck, I'm going to need you to go ahead and, you know, turn that over to us because we need that for our investigation. And, you know, the Imperial Authority appreciates your cooperation. How does she see it if it's like in our pockets? These are big chests full of gold you guys took back. <laughs> I hid something under my armpit, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. But she says I, I we, we did hide the sex toy, though. Yeah. Where we hit it's, it, not going to tell you. <laughs> it's it's someplace naughty. <laughs> um, but she does say to you, I need you to turn over everything you found from the shipwreck. I can That belongs you, to the Imperial Guards. I can assure you that it's uh, A-OK. Everything's... All right, how about this? How about this? How about this? How about this? Uh, all right. All right uh, I understand where you're coming from. Uh <clears throat> You need you need your stuff. That makes sense. You know, you seem like a fine person, fine lady. Real, you look like you're good at inquisiting, and uh, you know what we did. We we didn't do it for the the treasure or anything like that. Uh, so, but you know, times are tough. Uh, if we turn, I mean, we're we're going to turn it over. But what can you give us in return? I'll let you keep ten gold each ten gold as a reward each. for giving us back. Ten gold each. How about we just do like a fair trade? Like, let's say we. How about have you listen to your gold? imperial leader? <clears throat> but we risked our lives, and we we uh. Uncharmed. And we thank you for your service, but this this is our our business. Do you want a pet turtle? No, I do not want a pet turtle. Are you sure? I mean, do I? There's that she says, any act of defiance will lead you to jail. Now, please give us everything that you got from the shipwreck. We need it for our investigation. Okay, uh, you said we could keep 10 gold. Can we each keep 11? We have this thing uh, that we do. 10 gold as the guards start coming in closer. Uh, I don't care, but I kind of, but I know what I have, but they don't know. And I, and I don't make any... Why do you have it? Like, I this is, like, we're kind of going to roll back things here in just a second, because I think... Well, she was technically standing over her when you cast that right, on Right, but, her. like, like the journey back, if we discussed it, like, who's better at lying? Um... So far right now, they don't have any reason to believe you're hiding yeah. something. I right, just then, think what you all right, have yeah. is. All right, then we'll, That's we'll, why I was like, I give okay. no indication that I have anything. So I, I hand yeah, over let, okay, 90 So we'll hand pieces. over all the stuff. The gems, the figurines. The figures, right. And uh, she kicks back 10 gold coins to each of you and says, thank you for your service. And she hops back on her steed as she hands the stuff to the other soldiers. And they kind of load it up into a wagon and they all kind of head to the inn. I tell her to call me. <laughs> and she ignores you as she goes Are you away. sure she ignores me? She ignores you. <laughs> that was okay. just the worst. I think about flipping her off, but I don't. Yeah, I, 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 I find a little bird figurine and I put it in my hand and I flip it. Yeah. <laughs> At her. She's like, flipping the bird. I got it. <laughs> Everyone got it. I was just saying. It wasn't a hard joke. It wasn't a thinker. I cry again. Everyone makes fun of me. So uh, you guys make it back to town. Um, you turn your loot over. Um, they have arrested that thief. Um, and now you guys find yourself in the town square. So how's the vibe of the town? Like, is there... Uh, everyone's a little on edge now that these soldiers have kind of shown up and kind of taken residence in the town. Um, but it's still, you know, still a nice evening it's towards the evening now and uh there's still people out on the streets and but everyone's a little bit more on edge i'm still um, wondering where fish is i i mean i say we we call it an eye go get a barbecue have some food what? um i pull out my lute the my little guitar play wonderwall everyone loves it uh, yeah you, i try uh, to i try to bring some joy to everyone because i know that been a, they think I'm a, a real 
poopy head. And so I try, <laughs> everyone's on edge. So I play some music and we have some drinks. And all right, yeah. So you you gain a little bit more uh, uh, re- repertoire with uh, rapport, rapport, whatever. You gain a little more, or yeah, rapport. You gain a little more rapport. Yeah. with the, with the crowd as you like, entertain. You know, what's a repertoire would be uh, me. My would be Wonderwall. Is That's in true. My repertoire and your rapport is with the crowd. <laughs> yeah. Rapport. So you are able to. Yeah. Exactly. So um, roll a performance check for me, real quick. Okay. You just had to back sass. <laughs> well, it's not a back sass thing. That would be 11. 11? Oh, yeah, that's good enough. You uh, you perform so well that people's moods are starting to cheer up a little more, and um, uh, more people are starting to feel more at ease around you. Cool. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so you guys are still a little, little battered up from the day. Um, enjoying a nice barbecue in the inn as uh, you get some drinks. There are still some guards sitting around, um, you know, getting drinks as well, since now they're kind of taking the place up. You see old Fish come back in, um, and he's sitting up at the bar, and he's saying, oh, look at you guys. You uh, look like you had a, a fun day. Yeah, where have you been, man? <laughs> I've been home. Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, anything you guys need, you just let us know, and we'll make sure to accommodate you. Anything to help me get a better night's rest tonight? I, I don't know. Maybe try counting sheep. Uh... Got some <laughs> melatonin? <laughs> Any of that z <laughs> I was to... thinking of something natural that they made. No. <laughs> we have this new bed. called a Serta. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, what would you guys like to do? I'm going to need some sort of rest or healing before we go on. Oh, yeah. There. Yeah. All right. So, what would you like to do? Just count. We just retire, yeah, <laughs> retire call, at the bar, and call right. do we have our same rooms? Uh, would you like different rooms? Well, I didn't know if like the guards are going to be like jerks and try. No, to uh, they have made sure and had you guys your room. So you like, said we had like the best rooms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, they look more after their own kind here. Gotcha. They consider you guys a little more family. Um, yeah, you see, uh, old Al Alfred appear in your room with you guys. Um, he pixelates back I in. I am changing my clothes, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> he says, oh, uh, yeah, sorry, Turk. Uh, Ever heard of <clears throat> knocking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, good job again today, guys. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah, you got rid of something else. I let me guess. May help Let me guess. Town. Let uh, me guess. You feel like our work here is not done. <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah. you're getting closer. Um, I can, can feel it. Give, can you give us a little bit more? information the only thing i can tell you is may, maybe ask around town a little bit maybe maybe talk to some of the locals um th- that's all the bosses have for me to message you this time do they do you really want us to help you because you gotta help you're us. not helping me you're uh, i'm just the messenger like i said you're helping the people well uh, ask, ask, I just relay. ask your bosses i will ask them so i have a question for yes. you yes do you do you think the turtle's gonna think about us i think so <laughs> In a good way. We, we, we when share, the sun we, sets, we we shared a moment. So, I, I I saw that the uh, the bosses. Uh, they, do you always you know, watch? I do. <laughs> like every. I am a watcher. Ev- everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> what you about dirty bird? <laughs> uh, well, anyways, uh, so you guys just uh, keep doing what you're doing. Um, I'm always here for you. And oh wait, 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 the best. wait, 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 what? What do you know about sex dance? Sex uh, dance. A sex dance. <laughs> A uh, sextant? The sextant. Sure. Um, what do you know about sexy dances? All, all, all I know is it is it is setting off a a weird aura. So, uh, like I said, maybe if you talk to some people in town, uh, it, it might do you some good. Anyone specific? You have to have something. Get a name I to got drop. nothing. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> you may have visited him once before. Fish. Not fish. <laughs> was it the guy that was scratching? Squish. <laughs> Fishy squish. Squish. Mish. Um, remember your buddy here was a little, uh, hurt the other day, a little, a little crazy. Uh, you had to get him healed. So, uh, maybe check that guy out again. That... Oh, now I remember. Cause we just totally like, oh yeah, you went and did that. We didn't actually do it, but yeah, we went and did that. Okay. I did say, let's go to the wizard and then made a hilarious reference. Nobody. Super good. Anyways, game. uh, I gotta go. So keep it up. Do you don't want to hang? I can't. I got like just a messenger. I gotta get back. But I thought you were um, a watcher. Messenger, watcher, uh, you know. Why can't you be many an, hats? Many why suits. can't you be an interactor? 
If you have because penny suits, why can't you let them have one? Yeah. I got you the vest. And you always wear the same. How do you have many suits if you always wear the same suit? I'll wear a different one tomorrow. Oh, so, so we, we'll see you tomorrow? You'll always see me. Every no, day. you always see us, right you creepy here, bird. As I touch my chest. Uh, and with that, Tarek, I'm gone. put a shirt on. And with that, he's out. So you guys want to go to sleep? I miss him. Yeah. The, I miss the turtle. Uh, yeah, that's what you guys want to do now. Yeah, I just, just want to yeah. call. All right, so you call the night. Uh, uh, you, yeah. what, go ahead. Yeah, that's it. We sleep. Yeah. All right, so you sleep. Um, so as you guys are sleeping again tonight, you notice you kind of have some of those same dreams you had the night before. Um, and as the night passes and you wake up in the morning, you realize you gain no benefits of your long rest. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode of Homebrew Adventures. Don't forget you can follow us on all our social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at HBA The Podcast. You can also check out our website, hbapodcast.com. And you can always email us your adventures at hbapodcast at gmail.com.